Yes. <laughs> Fucking love lane. I thought that was like exaggerated. But obviously, like, no, that's just what happened. For a show that has a lot of metaphysical imagery, her room is very real. It's great. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's very real. It's a very real room. Just like this is exactly what it's like. And like the the like cooling systems and shit. I'm like yeah. this is such a vibe actually. It's a dude. Lane is actually a legendary show. Let it is. I've rewatched it a few. I because it's so short. I've got the opportunity to rewatch it a few times with people. It's like oh you haven't seen it. Let's just binge it. Do you want to yeah. come close? I would love to. Yeah. So. I feel like um, I feel like Lane is like such a pioneer of an anime, you know. Yeah, Mason sometimes. What's up, Swagman? Yeah, um, I knew Swagman would be watching. There we go. All reliable. All reliable. So this is actually Winner Seven. Wish, wish you were here, Swagman. Wish you were here. Actually, it's not the same. It really, really isn't the same. Um, yeah. So like, I had this experience when I first watched Lane, right? Where I was like, oh, like, like you know the whole like we've both seen it heaps of times, right? And how like so much of the show is just like a like a an attempt at projecting like what do you think like the future's gonna be like with the internet and stuff, right? Oh, all that stuff's great. The when you're looking at the operating systems and it's like this kind of Macintosh looking, but it's got its own alternate reality vibe. Because, um, well, the thing about it for me, right, it's like, yeah, it's sort of alternate reality with, like, um, how, like, technology looks and stuff, but I have to, I gotta give it to them. The concepts they were preaching in that show, oh, yeah, insanely like... relevant to 2023 modern life. It wasn't even, even in the late the, like, 90s, it was like mid 90s or something. So or something. He, yeah, so here's like... the experience I had, right? I watched it for the first time, and I'm like, damn, they were pretty on point with, like, all this stuff about the internet and how we relate to each other and, like, What's even memory? All this stuff, right? I'm like that. Yeah, this is this is pretty good for like a, a an anime that came out in 2006. It's kind of got its own like anonymous stand in. Like yeah, the, the internet anonymous true, group. True. Yeah, with the knights. Um, I love I, I love that. That's just the biggest red herring. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, like, Excellent. so I was I was watching it and I'm like, yeah, this is like crazy ahead of its time for like a, an anime that came out in 2005. And then I looked it up and I'm like, yeah, oh, oh wow. Oh, my yeah, God. It does have that vibe. Like, and it um, it uses the anime medium well, which, like, I mm. think uh, I was talking about Coffee Rex with about Legends of the Guardian Heroes, Galactic Heroes or something. Oh, Legends of the Galactic Heroes. Yeah, yeah. and he was talking Sick. about the appeal of that. And I sort of get a similar vibe where it's almost like, he said the, um, the animation, like budget, super low, very yeah. low quality animation. But that's almost, if you're watching anime, that can be part of... The, like the reason you're watching anime anyway is to see what can they do with such stark limitations. That's what led to them having these like gorgeous still backgrounds with very minimal animation on top of it. But that's yeah. part of like the anime style, and I think Lane does that very well. We can tell it's a low budget show, but they they use that budget. No, well. you're so right too, because like I um, and I like the I like all the overlays. I like it's actually got the best fucking sound design ever. Or oh, rip to coffee. Uh, we somehow didn't. Just, like, we somehow managed to waffle on for long enough about Lane for a minute 40 that Coffee lost the game without us saying a single word about what happened. Here's our uh, one hour YouTube essay analysis of Zero Experiments Lane. Well, may as well. Like, Just putting it over uh, melee for, <laughs> to avoid copyright because we can't actually show clips of Lane. So. Yeah, I'll, like, we'll, we'll put Subway Surface over top. How's that? That's How's it. that? Um, so we are actually going to stadium though. Like I really want to keep talking about Lane, but oh yeah, my god, <laughs> big rabbit hole. McLeod wants us to talk about him at the moment. Big so. rabbit hole. Just such a big rabbit hole for me. Fuck uh, it up. Coffee always looks pretty nice. Though. I mean, like he's. It's always a question of how he practice he is, whether he's consumed by other games. And True. His pessimism over about Melee, but when he, whenever he comes back, given how sporadic it is, I always feel like it's really clean. I actually really played nice. a bit of Coffee Rex today online. Oh, yes. At about lunchtime. It was a good time. Um, the one thing I will say, I feel like this is the main weakness of Coffee Rex, if you will. Just got a Coffee Rex taunt. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Get him. What, what makes you say that? Uh, no, so, not, not anything that I've seen on screen so far, right? But, um, so, what his like, biggest weakness to me is that, um, yeah, well, it does look like you can move really quick, move really clean, execute properly. Um, when it's like, comes to neutral, right? 
you see that he's trying to play a certain way where um, he expects you to eventually give up neutral. Yeah. Right? And so what I would really love is a bit more attention being placed on when he is in neutral. Um, sort of what he's trying to do there, right? Like, actually, it's kind of bringing the face. I mean, for in this position, it's like he wants the up smash, he's, fun. he's behind. Holding back's really not going to help. Nice. That's a good way to clean that up. So yeah, Let's see if he gets sort of a quick conversion on this. I mean, he can. You can get zero to deaths here. Yeah. Just a quick, like, wave shine, up air, up air up air type thing. Um, I just want to see a bit more confidence while he uh, is sort of waiting for something to happen, right? Yeah. Because he can afford to wait a bit longer, right? And then when that happens, I think you'll find there might be more cleaner opportunities presented. Because oftentimes when he does force the issue and goes forward, it ends up being at a timing where the other person's already kind of decided what they're doing, right? And so, like, I saw it a couple times that game, um, where, you know, they're waiting, yeah, exactly like With that. With the down air. Exactly yeah. like that, actually, where it's like, they're waiting, and then Coffee Rex comes in the exact moment that McLeod is like, I'm going to go Because you don't want to trade with Fox, really, right? Like, you sort of, I mean, this... If you're Fox, you don't want to trade with yeah. at all, no. Um, so, so, yeah, that's how I feel. If they're always just bashing into each other, it's, yeah... Yeah, like that's uh, that's just like something to watch out for, I feel. Um, because I just want to see more of a weave, you know, and not just dashing left and right. I really do mean like tr real, like real actual baits, not like wait, not just waiting, like real actual baits. Um, that was looking pretty good for a bit there. Just needs to find something a bit cleaner on the opening here. Yeah, that, yeah. that down air felt a bit sporadic, didn't it? It's like... Yeah, yeah. Like, it was technically neutral, but he felt the need to keep forcing the issue. Nice. Almost needs to keep a bit more distance with his dash dances, I think. And yeah. that was sort of like, I mean, see those really tight dash dances. You can afford to, especially against Peach, you can spread them out a little bit more and sort of can command a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's about the command, the space that you command. That's such a good word for it, actually, because it's, um... It's not so much Coffee Rex command space, it's more just that he's comfortable when there is space, yeah. you know? But it doesn't feel like he's the one kind of controlling, you know, the relationship between the two players, you know? And it just ends up being this thing where it's like, yep, uh, he gets rocked when sort of both people bite the bullet at the same time. Um, because either he's too early or he's too late. And like Fox is just the character where it's like <laughs> You gotta be just right. You gotta be just right and so that's why like a lot of Foxes kind of play in a way where the openings they get are, are like short, dude. Yeah, that was so good actually. <laughs> um He went for that earlier and missed it, but it was like yeah. I, that's why he went for it. Like, he's got those somewhere in his kit. He's just need he just needs to be able to like um I say just, but you know, <laughs> nobody is just needing to do it's something. It's so simple, right? Just do it's exactly so what coffee when you're watching this later. Yeah. Just do exactly what Kai says next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Just load the replay up. Just start it from like the beginning. <laughs> just do everything else I say. Yeah. What I mean is just like you know, just needs a bit more. Yeah. Threat GGs. is the thing. All right. Let's do it. Let's, let's play. Go. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. I'll take that. Gotcha. Ouch. Yeah, watch it out. They'll, they'll get you. They're like like crab claws. All right, let's uh let's pop us in. Okay. Okay, let's 